Okay, now we're working on a histogram. So a histogram, what we're going to do is we're going to take all of our values and we're going to first break them into bins. Okay, so first we need to figure out how many bins. That's a great question. No one has a hard and true answer to this. Most times what we're going to do is what the calculator gives us back. But first let's take a look at so one way that people use to find the number of bins. What they do is they take the square root of the number of values that they have. And so we have 36 values, so that tells me that I want roughly 6 bins. Okay, so that's the idea to start off. Again, this is just an estimate. Sometimes you'd mess around the data to see what works the best, but we can see 6 is going to be what that gives us back. We'd always round up. Um, okay, so we're starting off, we're going to have 6 bins. So then I need to say, okay, what's the range of this data? And so it goes from 50 to 151. And so the range is roughly 101, okay? So now I take 101 and divide by 6, the number of bins that I want, and I see that this is going to give me a number approximately around 15. Seems close enough. I'm not going to use the exact value. I want a nice even value to work off of. <coughs> okay, so here's what I'm going to do. Each of my bins are going to be 15 units wide, so let's go ahead and see what we have here for this. Um, so what we want to start off with, the values, and we're going to see how many fall into each of those bins. So my lowest number is 50, so I'll start at that, and I'm going to go up to 65. And then we'll go 65 to 80, 80 to 90. Notice each of these are 15 units wide. Oh, 95. 95 to 110. 110 to 125. And notice the way that I'm writing these is it's not equal. So if I have a value of 110, it would fall into this bin. And then the last one, 140, 155. Okay, so now we go and we count the frequency. How many fall into this bin? All right, so let's go ahead and see. How many values do I have between 50 and it's really 64 if you think about it that way. So I've got one that falls into there. Okay, between 65 and 80. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Uh, between 80 and 95. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Uh, 95 and 110. 1, 2. 110 and 125. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. One, two, three, four. Notice the 140 jumps into the next one. It's going to leave us there with three. Okay, so there's my bins. Here's the frequency that we have. And so now all we need to do is we need to draw our axes. And so we've got 50, 65, 80. Nice and scaled down here. Uh, 140. And so we're going to have frequency over here, how often it occurs. And in this case, so we've got to go up to 11. So 1, 2, 5, 10, 11. Okay, so now let's take a look. So in the first bin, I only have 1. So I'm going to draw up to 1. Nice and easy. Next one, up to 7. And so, you know, if you're doing this at home, you want these to be perfect, the same widths, all that same stuff. Uh, so it doesn't violate what we call the area principle. But you know, my drawing's just not that great. Uh, so, you know, it is what it is. Uh, next one, we got two, 110, eight. And then we see we got four, and then three. Okay, so now just kind of look at the overall general trend, and here's our histogram that we have. And the general trend, if you think about it, kind of goes like this. Notice how, it's, it's, if you think of it as having like a tail, the tail swings out to the right. The right side's pulled out, so we'd still call this skewed to the right. Now, a lot of times with the histogram, we'll use the mean instead of the median because it's a value that's easier, but we're not going to go ahead and worry about that. All right, next thing I want to do here with this is what if we looked at instead of frequency, if we looked at it as relative frequency? And in this case, the reason I'm going to do that is what if I had two things I was comparing and they had different group sizes? Okay, so to make it relative frequency, all I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, overall, you know what, there's a total of 36 values. So instead of looking at as the count, 
I'm going to look at it as the proportion that are in there. So the relative frequency. So this one would be 1 out of 36. All right, so it would have about 3%. Uh, or, and then so the next one, 19. And then 11 is 31. And then we got 2. It's going to be about 0.05. And we got 8, it's 0.22, 4, it's going to be 0.11, should have been able to figure that out. And then we got 0.08. Okay, so now let's do the same thing. Let's go ahead and make our graph over here. Now, this scale will still be the exact same, but over here we're going to have relative frequency. And so this will be in a proportion now, and so it'll go up to 31%, or we could go, you know, 35, 30, 20, 10, 5. And we got everything else is the exact same. I'd scale and label here. I'm just kind of saving some time for you guys and for me. And so the first one's going to go up to 0.028. Next one's going to go up to 19. Next one's going to go up to 31. Next one's a little bit short. I know I'm getting off my axes, but I'm just trying to hustle through this. Three and two. All right, what do you notice between these two graphs? And hopefully you should see that they look the exact same. Yeah, and that's the point. Is the frequency or relative frequency, it's going to give us the same picture. That's the idea. It would just be better to use this one when, we have, when we're comparing things that don't have the same exact size. One bad thing about histograms, uh, they do take a little bit more time than some of the other ones. They're good for large data sets, but again, they don't preserve any of the data. I couldn't tell you what values fall, besides knowing they're between 80 and 95, I couldn't tell you what's in there. So this is our histogram and all the good stuff.